Kwame and Chelsea, there is so much to talk about with these two. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates, Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'll be breaking down Chelsea and Kwame from Love is Blind season four. If you're curious, stay tuned. What's on your mind? All right, you all know there are gonna be a ton of spoilers in this video, so if you haven't finished this season, definitely finish it and come back. And also, the disclaimer has to be stated, I am not these people's therapist. I am basing this breakdown on what we actually saw on film. None of us are watching these shows from a completely objective state. My purpose with these analyses is to hopefully give you all some ideas about ways that you could recognize yourself in these relationships, maybe things that you typically do or people that you love to help give you language and ideas around how to address those things. So without further ado, let's jump into the breakdown. So let's talk about first impressions. Kwame is actually one of the very first people that we saw on the show. And I think his very first date that we saw was with Chelsea. I really honestly didn't have too much impression about Chelsea. I thought she seemed very matter of fact, it seemed like she was there for business. Like you could tell she was there with a very clear goal. Kwame was very interesting because I I loved the level of honesty he brought in and self-reflection. Even when he started talking about things from the very beginning that really suggested maybe some internalized racism. What is internalized racism? It is basically when even you as a person of color have adopted the stereotypes or beliefs about typically the population that you're a part of, your demographic, you start believing the stereotypes or beliefs about that group. What made it obvious that Kwame is dealing with some forms of internalized racism? He talked about a need to prove that he was educated, to feel that he was successful. When he was in a date with Micah, he even talked about not wanting to use the name he typically goes by, which is Kwame, because he felt that it put him in a very particular box. I mean, what box would that be, right? Other than making it very clear that he's a black man, and I'm not sure if maybe there was even more caveat to that, a specific type of black man he was afraid of being perceived as. He even talks about not being able to take his girlfriend to prom in high school. And I couldn't pick up my girlfriend to go to prom because I'm black. So I always feel this need to impress. I like have to immediately bring up, hey, like I'm really successful and I have my master's degree. So that suggests to me that Kwame has a history of probably dating outside of his race. And so those are all indications to me that he's probably dealing with some level of internalized racism. And this is something that a lot of us in minority populations deal with. This is not something I think that we would need to shame him for. It's a part of dealing with discrimination and prejudice is that a lot of times those messages are internalized. For example, if you're at work and you're upset about something and you feel like I need to be very careful with how I express this anger because I don't want to be perceived as that angry black person, for example, that's an example of internalized racism, right? You're trying to modify yourself to avoid prejudice and discrimination. And so I don't judge Kwame for that, but I do think that was very apparent even in the way that he was initially approaching his dates. And I think it's also very apparent in the type of women that he was the most interested in pursuing. Most of the time, I think you do have some idea of the race of the person that you're talking to. When I think back to Lauren and Cameron season one, I don't think either one of them was shocked to see one another in terms of their race. So another thing I noticed about Kwame very, very early on, I mean, really within the first, I would say 10, 15 minutes of the show is that he started really expressing this focus on how the person he was dating made him feel, which obviously we all should pay attention to how the person we're dating makes us feel. But it started to seem like it was something he was really laser focused on. He wanted to know, did he feel cared for? Did he feel validated? Did he feel like this person really wanted him? Which obviously, again, no one wants to feel rejected by their partner, but there are more important characteristics to pay attention to when you're trying to assess whether or not a person can be a good life partner. Like, do you all have similar lifestyles? Do you have similar life values? Religious beliefs, all of those things are very important things 
things to take into consideration. And I'm not saying he wasn't talking about any of those things. Those are just not the things that made it to the final edit that we ultimately saw on the show. So it did seem like he was extremely focused on how the person made him feel. And I really think that is the main reason he continued dating Chelsea in the pods because it seemed like he was very, very serious about dating Micah. He even said- With Chelsea, I see this very ride or die person who would not ever allow you to feel unwanted. Um, but at the same time, like I'm very, very set on Micah. That is what he said in his confessional leading up to Micah breaking up with him. We'll talk more about Micah in the video about her and Paul, but I do think we obviously have to talk about the relationship between Micah and Kwame. I feel like honestly, based on just what made it to the edit, I didn't feel strongly about their connection or his connection with Chelsea. I feel like when it came down to like the Zach Bliss Irina triangle, which we'll get to in another video, of course, I was leaning more toward one of those connections, right? But when it came to to Chelsea, Micah, Kwame, I really did not care one way or another. It didn't seem like there was a lot of focus on life outside of the pods. And so I couldn't care less who he chose or who she chose. So even though they did have a connection, I never necessarily thought of the connection as strong. Then we talk about the Micah, Kwame breakup. This was something the therapist in me found super fascinating. So as I said, Kwame did say that Chelsea seemed like a ride or die, but that he was pretty pretty set on Micah. Micah initiates this very roundabout conversation where she's like, I love how we've had a slow burn and I think it should stay at a slow burn. I was like, what a weird way of communicating that because a slow burn means that something would still could possibly be kindled in the future, which obviously later on we saw maybe that is what she meant by that. But she like, I think we should explore other connections. Kwame's response, immediate dismissal of his emotional response. Okay, cool. That works for me. He did not want Micah to know that he was so severely affected by her saying that. He goes into, well, I'm really glad we had a good time talking in the pods and thank you for your time and bye. Then we follow him to the guy's lounge and I mean, he's sobbing, 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 sobbing. Like it was really interesting to see him have that level of emotion. I mean, you could see when he walked in right away that everything was not okay. When we talk about why Kwame acted that way when Micah told him. There are really two defense mechanisms that we could look at there, right? We have the option of repression and we have the option of denial. And I don't know how clearly he fit into either. Repression would be that he is repressing those feelings. You're repressing it all the way to the point where it is denial and you really don't even accept or acknowledge the fact that it exists and a lot of times we see it surface later. Denial will look more like, oh, she thinks that she doesn't wanna be with me, but just wait, just wait, she'll she'll wanna be with me later. That would be denial, right? So we were really looking at a repression of emotions, but luckily it was pretty short lived. He only did it in that moment where we saw him completely deny his emotional response. Then we see him have that catharsis, those tears, those sobs. And he even says like, I am not doing okay right now. We hear him say, I'm having a tough time. That acknowledgement of what he's experiencing, I was appreciative that he didn't just try to completely minimize and dismiss his feelings. Do I think that he would have been better off actually allowing himself to fully experience that moment with Micah in the room? I do. Ultimately, what we see with him and Micah is this lack of closure. He dismissed that moment, walked out in response to that feeling of rejection instead of really sitting there and getting the answers that he needs before he's engaged to someone else. So that is really, I think, a lesson that a lot of people can benefit from is sometimes when we are in that very vulnerable position, I talked about it a little bit last episode with Marshall and Jackie, where a person has the ability to hurt us and has hurt us, you think you come across stronger, more resilient when you act as though this person has had no effect on you at all. Like, okay, well, I hope you have a great day. That's cool, no problem. I'm not upset, I'm not mad. That is such emotional immaturity because what you're really doing in that moment is A, not holding yourself accountable to working through those emotions and you're not holding the person you care about or that 
obviously has an impact on you accountable for whatever actions or words led to the way that you're feeling. So this is a great way to educate the people that you care about on how to best be in relationship with you. So he could have used that as an opportunity to say, that's really surprising. Can you explain why? Or, you know, I wasn't expecting that. In the reunion, Kwame suggests that he was actually going to break up with Micah as well. I don't think the response that we saw from him really supports that claim. He says he has a notebook entry where he already had written out his plans to break up with her. So if that is the case, maybe he is only reacting to the fact that he was broken up with, not the ending of the relationship. But I have serious doubts that he was on the same page with Micah that they should explore other connections because pretty soon before that, depending on how things are edited, of course, it seemed as though he said he was very set on Micah. What's super interesting to me is where this theatrical side of Kwame comes out. I was a theater kid. So if you're a theater kid, you know, like we can be so extra. And I was like, this is the artist in Kwame coming out. When Paul started talking about narratives and the villain, and then Kwame's talking in his confessional, like in this moment, he's the villain in my story. I was like, what kind of show are we watching now? Like, is this the origin story of the villain? It just seemed so mellow dramatic but again I really applauded him for giving words to what he was feeling because what would not have been helpful was for him to deny that that is how he was viewing Paul in that moment I don't think there was really a need for him to tell Paul because he and Paul I don't think had a particularly close relationship that on that's a theme we'll see with Kwame is that he speaks in metaphors he seems to be quite an abstract thinker which is very common for artists i've noticed that i can't always pay attention to or focus the most on what Kwame is saying directly. I have to really listen more to the metaphors he's using to explain his feelings because that usually gives me a little bit more insight into maybe what's happening beneath the surface. So you guys, do you think as Paul is sharing how hard it was for him to break up with Amber with Kwame, I feel like you had to know that Micah also just did the same thing with Kwame. So it's kind of like, why are you confiding in Kwame when he clearly is the person on the other end and like watching how Kwame is responding to this like I need a word for this like Kwame is one of those people that when he smiles you never know what that smile means and so in these moments when he's reflecting on Paul being the villain of his story it's really interesting to see like his reaction in front of people versus his reaction in the confessional versus his reaction only talking to Micah. We saw three very different responses to this overwhelming emotional moment for him. So I think the most clarity we get, the most honesty we get is when he's in the confessional, which is what the confessionals are designed for. Even though he doesn't necessarily completely repress his emotions, you can see he's suppressing his emotions with the smile he's trying to diffuse tension in a way to seem like he's more okay than he actually is by smiling and laughing he's trying to make the heartbreak less tangible so it's like yes I'm upset but you know that's life almost and I really feel like he was completely crumbling inside and so I thought that in that moment Kwame was trying to express himself by using metaphors instead of actually telling Paul, hey, I'm also suffering in this moment and I might not be the best person for you to confide in. Now, as we progressed, Kwame definitely did start showing some signs of using denial as a defense mechanism. What he started trying to do was deny his connection with Micah, his feelings for Micah, his hurt and disappointment and that feeling of rejection from Micah and start trying to convince himself that Chelsea is the person that he wanted to be with all along. It's totally possible that Chelsea was always the right person for him and that that was always going to be his strongest connection. But we cannot ignore the fact that you're still in the process of grieving this feeling of rejection from Micah. Start episode three 
he's talking to his friend in the pods about like how, man, you know, Chelsea's just moving up and up and up. And he's like, I just look forward to talking to her. I love her, you know, I enjoy talking with her, man. Then he says something that was really interesting to me. He says, I've never had someone so into me. What does that tell you? What does that tell you that that was the primary reason that she kept moving up? What Kwame was dealing with was a hit to his ego, which we all have an ego that we typically utilize defense mechanisms to protect. He had a hit to his ego. That experience of rejection from Micah is a form of humiliation for him. What soothes that? What's a balm for that hit to the ego, for that wound? Feeling wanted, feeling desired, right? And Chelsea was serving I believe, as a way to soothe that ache, that feeling of being rejected. I'm not looking at that as an inherently bad thing. I think sometimes we are in relationships that can help heal us from old wounds, right? The difficulty here is that the wound was so fresh and the process is so intertwined that it's not like he was able to fully move away from Micah and focus exclusively on Chelsea, which is what we end up seeing, right? Because Micah is still a part of this process and that wound still exist, it is easier to continue trying to understand why you're in pain, right? Instead of focusing on the solution to that pain. And it's really not fair to Chelsea. The main thing she is doing for you is making you feel great about yourself. Where does that leave her? Now, I'm not saying that Kwame didn't make Chelsea feel good. She states that he did. Let's say it's not Chelsea and Kwame. Let's say I'm talking about two completely different people that were in the situation that we saw play out on screen, I would think that that person that is being the person that's helping you recover or heal from that hurt, from that pain, that person is going to have a lot more emotional burden and labor than the person who is trying to process the pain because they've got to help you get to a place of being your best version of yourself for the relationship with them. You're not coming to them as a blank slate, right? You're coming to them as a lesser version of yourself, the version of you that's wounded and pain that's hurt. And they have to first get you back to baseline, then try to help you thrive in the new relationship. Even his friend was like, I really love talking to her. Chelsea? Chelsea. The way he said that to me, like, this is not the person you've been talking about. You've not been talking to me about Chelsea this whole time. And he's like, yeah, man, Chelsea. Like, I'm just as surprised as you are. Like, it shouldn't be that much of a shock if you've been dating her all along. That means you've been dating her and mostly excited about Micah, which is totally fine, but you don't then just wanna jump into whatever is still available to you. We move into the pot date with Kwame and Chelsea. Let's call this the real thing pod date. This is where Chelsea got serenaded by that original song. Before that, Kwame is telling Chelsea that she makes him feel so wanted and so good. He said to her, What I love about you is your constant reassurance about how you feel about me. Listen, is that what you want to be the most loved for in your relationship? Do you want your gravestone to say, this person made me feel great about myself? Chelsea has beautiful characteristics outside of how she makes Kwame feel. So I was kind of curious why she was not paying more attention to Kwame's words. To me, he's just drawing a direct comparison between her and Micah. Micah made me feel rejected and you make me feel good. Therefore, I'm going to be with you. I just don't know if that is a solid enough reason to pursue a life with someone. Then Chelsea said something super interesting. I don't think I've ever had somebody make me feel so calm. But then she goes on to describe intense physiological symptoms of anxiety. She was like, my body tingles and rumbles and my heart beats out of my chest. I'm like, that is not describing the physiological characteristics of calm. Because then she says, but at the end of the day, I'm like, it's all going to be okay because I'm with him. I'm like, uh, what I really need is a lyricist to break down the lyrics of the song of the real thing. I just want the real thing. I just want the real thing. Even the fact that he named it the real thing, I viewed that as just further evidence of him moving himself into a place of denial. Because what changed in a day 
between you feeling like you are so set on Micah and then feeling so committed to convincing yourself that this thing with Chelsea is the real thing. It's almost like gaslighting himself, right? It's like he is aware that he's probably thinking a lot about Micah, that he's heard about Micah. He's probably at this point still shedding tears about Micah. But then he's like, no, you want to be with Chelsea. With Chelsea, you can have the real thing. Chelsea makes you feel great about yourself. That's what it felt like. It felt like an uphill battle of trying to convince himself to be with her. But on the other end, right, if we're to look at it as, well, maybe Chelsea was the best thing for him. And sometimes it does take a little bit of work for us to go with the person that is actually the best suited for us. The difference is in this situation, it seemed like he really just didn't have much of a choice and the person who is your number one doesn't want to be with you and now you're just going to go with this other person who's making their interest in you very apparent so again we're seeing how Kwame is utilizing art as a way I think of really expressing to us how he's feeling I think in that moment he was trying to make this please let this be the real thing I just want the real thing not this is for sure the real thing now let's move on to their proposal this proposal has to be one of the worst proposals i've ever witnessed why because even though micah wasn't there micah was in the room this whole proposal was about how he originally wanted Micah and now he realizes how he needs Chelsea. Kwame proposes again using a metaphor that tells us everything we need to know by comparing Chelsea to a pair of tan pants. He says, I packed all my black pants. I love wearing black pants. Every outfit had black pants with it. But I looked this morning and I saw I had a pair of tan pants. I put those on, I'm like, hmm, I love these. These pants are perfect. And basically he's telling Chelsea, you're my tan pants. I love black pants, but I love these too. And that's what our relationship has been like. I mean, that was the worst proposal. And I literally wrote in my note, Chelsea, are you listening? <laughs> like, are you listening? She was like, yes. And then he was like, will you marry me? She's like, can I say a word? I'm like, oh my gosh. Then she has to say her metaphor. I feel like our love has been such a slow dance. I'm like, oh my gosh. <sighs> if y'all are trying to find the most creative way of saying I was the second option and now I'm your only option, job well done. So in that way, I started thinking, okay, Chelsea's in denial too, right? Chelsea does not want to believe that Kwame had a stronger connection or relationship with Micah than he had with her. I think in her mind, she always thought it was gonna be her and Kwame in the reunion she was like well Kwame told me he was gonna break up with Micah too I'm like okay yeah whatever narrative helps you sleep at night but I don't know if that is what actually happened just based on what we saw again I can only go based on what we saw and from what we saw he did not seem prepared excited on the same page about that breakup why would Paul be considered the villain of your life if he and you were on the same page that you should not be with Micah the Chelsea and Kwame reveal was very interesting I couldn't fully tell if Kwame was attracted to Chelsea but you could tell Chelsea was very attracted to Kwame I mean she just seemed so like hungry seeing him and if I'm being really honest you always have to consider the level of fetishization when it comes to interracial couples at times and I remember her saying she wants to have a spiritual connection with her partner's body and maybe that's what we were seeing just the level of lust that we were seeing immediately on her end then we go to Mexico Kwame and Micah meet in his confessional he basically is saying that the connection he had with Micah was so strong in the pods that it didn't even matter to him how she looked like he would have been so he uses the word encapsulated by her just because of that connection then he says she's beautiful and he's like I'm attracted to her this kind of contradicts so much of what you've been trying to convince yourself of after she rejected you right you trying to convince yourself that it's always been Chelsea you want to be with Chelsea and this is the real thing right all of that language is completely contradicted when you are still putting the connection with Micah on a pedestal first of all I do think that Kwame had a right to be upset when Micah or Irina were making light of the fact that he was broken up with or rejected by her why would you make a joke of that and I was actually proud of him for like not letting that 
that fly under the radar and addressing it. Where he lost me is where he starts turning into this like super flirtatious person and laughing and touching. You know, Micah was saying so much inappropriate stuff like saying she'll always be here and she's comparing them and complimenting him. And I thought he did a good job holding his own. He didn't say anything incriminating. Whereas let's say if Paul and Micah did end up getting married and he watched that back, the stuff Micah was saying. And whatever happens, I will be here. Like I will. I'll still be here. Yeah. Like I really will. I feel like that was incriminating. She was trying to bait Kwame into basically admitting that he wished that he were with her, that he found her super beautiful. I think that he did a good job avoiding taking the bait verbally, but physically, as far as how much time he was investing and spending time with her, all of that wrong choice. If you are saying you're committed to your fiance, I completely agree with Chelsea that that 20 minutes is really inappropriate and very embarrassing. And I like how Chelsea handled the conversation with him. She wasn't compromising her values. She's like, no, that was completely inappropriate. There is no reason you should be talking to her for that long. And I agree with her completely on that, honestly. Now, I'm not one of those people who's like, you need to police who your partner is talking to, but I definitely think if in this situation it's someone you could consider an ex, someone a week ago you were considering proposing to, I could see the need for boundaries. Like you need to be able to focus forward on the person that you are with now. Now, when they go and do the ritual thing, that thing looked kind of interesting and cool. I was like, I would like to do that with my husband, like reconnect that way. But I did like the apology that that Kwame gave. That's one thing I've noticed is that when Kwame apologizes, he does give very specific apologies. He doesn't say, sorry if I made you feel that way. What he said is, if you felt deprioritized, that was selfish of me. What an excellent apology. And I remember thinking, I was like, okay, that's a great apology. Now let's follow it up with actions, right? Words are words. Some people are really good with their words, but let's follow it up with action and we'll see if that was the case after that. But I did really think that he did an excellent job apologizing and I commended Chelsea also for letting it go. She was like, I already forgave you for that. In some situations, you know, a person being forgiving in that way could be viewed as weak, but I thought Chelsea did a great job of acknowledging that it was an issue, holding him accountable. And when she got that apology, saying, okay, we're gonna move forward. I forgive you for that and we're we're going to move forward. I don't wanna see that happen again. So that's one thing I always respected about Chelsea. I remember in the pods, Irina was like, I wish I was a nicer person. And Chelsea was like, why can't you just be? She's like, why don't you just be nicer? She calls it as she sees it. And I really do respect that about her. So I didn't view Chelsea as like weak during this process. She seemed like she knew what she wanted. We all know she knew what she wanted. And she was like, there are some things I am willing to navigate and there are some things I'm not willing to navigate. And this was those situations where I could see she was like, this relationship is more important to me than contributing to a dynamic of like being enemies here. Like we're supposed to be having a good time. I am not going to feed any more into that. I'm not going to ruin the time that we still have left together. So I did really respect her for that. Now, when Chelsea was super afraid of introducing Kwame to her dad, I remember thinking like, is race a factor? Why is she so, so worried about that? After meeting her family, doesn't seem like that was an issue. I mean, her dad was obviously very, very accepting, but I really was more paying attention to those moments leading up. There's a lot that we can note. One thing I really liked Liked is that Kwame was able to name the difficulty they were having. He said, we're both on edge. Simple tactics like that can significantly help in communicating with your partner when you're both stressed out. Just saying, we're both afraid, we're both nervous, we're both on edge right now. We can diffuse a lot of tension by just acknowledging that that is what is happening. It starts to create the perspective of we instead of me versus you. So we're both on edge, we're both nervous, we're both a little worried that helps Chelsea in that situation not feel alone in her stress. I also really loved the conversation they were having where Chelsea was explaining to him why she was nervous. And she said to him, my dad, anyone I've introduced him to, he's never really seen them as a life partner. And Kwame responded, makes sense. Have you ever seen anyone being a life partner? And she was like, well, no. That is a great example of using curiosity as a way to help 
a partner navigate their own thought processes, right? Because Chelsea was afraid her father would not accept Kwame as her fiance, especially given the process with which they did it. But by Kwame flipping it around on her, well like, hey, if you haven't seen someone as your life partner, then of course he hasn't seen that either. I think that was a beautifully illustrated example of using reason and logic to help dismantle a cognitive distortion because Chelsea was catastrophizing. She was panicking. She was thinking her father was going to reject Kwame or the choice that she's made for her life. And Kwame was using reason and questions to help her think through that. He could have made it more self-focused. Well, why wouldn't he think of me as a life partner? Why wouldn't he accept me? Or man, if you don't want me to be your life partner, then whatever, I don't care about his opinion. He wasn't doing that. He was like, well, have you ever seen someone as your life partner? Such a great question. And that's when I was like, okay, Kwame, I feel is a pretty excellent communicator. That is one thing that I was able to pick up on. He pays attention to his emotions. He is creative. He expresses himself both literally and figuratively. And a lot of times, like I said, we have to pay more attention to the figurative expression with Kwame. But I thought this was a great example of how he was able to help steer a conversation that could have gone south because Chelsea was so nervous that she was projecting her anxiety onto Kwame and displacing her anticipated frustration with her father onto Kwame. And he, I think, did a great job dismantling that. Then we get to the very significant and important element of Kwame and Chelsea's relationship, which is that Kwame's mom is not in support of it. I've heard some people say you need to forget what your parents say, live your life for yourself. That is a lot easier said than done, especially when you have a good relationship with your parents. Because when we are talking about marriage, we're talking about the blending of two families. And when your families do not get along or they're not in support of the relationship, that is more stress on your life. And you guys know stress affects so much about our life all the way up to our sex life. So when Kwame was taking that into consideration, the fact that his mother was not in support of the relationship, that makes it very difficult to envision a future. You're thinking about your wedding. You're thinking about that first pregnancy announcement. You're thinking about your first kid, all your kids' holidays. If you have grudge with your parent, even if you don't, you really want your family to be a unit in enjoying those milestones in your life. So I don't take that lightly. And if a person did say that they didn't want to move forward with the wedding because their parents are not on board. I personally would not see an issue with that because maybe it's a matter of dating more. But if you feel like you know for certain this is your person, this is the life that you're wanting to build and you have faith that your parents will come around, then that is where you have to take more of a risk. But it is a risk, right? Because they may never. They may feel slighted because you went forward with the wedding even without them being apart. The reality is a lot of parents are controlling and they want to have more say or influence over their adult children's lives than they really are entitled to. So you have to find that balance. But do I understand why that made it so much more difficult for Kwame to make a decision? Absolutely. I don't fault him for taking that seriously and wanting to have his mother support. Now, when Kwame and Chelsea are having yet another conversation about their future. He's talking about all the sacrifices that he's about to make, having to move, leaving his friends, leaving his social life, moving forward in a relationship without all of his family support. And I thought Chelsea asked him an excellent question. Like, do you want to settle down? She asked it in a way that I thought was very neutral. It didn't seem like it was antagonistic. That was a very, very good question because the things that Kwame was saying suggested that maybe he was not in a place where settling down made sense for him at that stage of his life. What I didn't like is that when Kwame answered that question and he was talking about all of the compromises, which Compromise does involve sacrifice, right? Like all of the compromises, thus sacrifices that he was making, he said, I just want you to consider that. I didn't really like her response where she just shortly says, consider. Because when you respond that way, like he's basically trying to tell you, it is not you. It is not that I don't wanna be with you. It is that I am basically having to completely uproot my life. And this is a decision I don't take lightly. And I need you to appreciate the fact that this is something I am thinking 
thinking about and stressing over on a daily basis. And for her to just say considered, I felt was not an empathetic enough response. What she could have said instead is, and there might've been times she said this before, maybe she feels like, oh, we're beating a dead horse. Maybe we, there are conversations we didn't see. Again, this is edited content. But what I think would have been a better response in that moment would have been, I do recognize that you're having to make a lot of sacrifices for us to be together. And I do appreciate that. I know it's stressful and I trust you to make the best decision for yourself. And all I can do is hope that that is with me. But I do understand that this is not an easy process for either of us, but especially for you. That's a way of saying, I hear you, I validate you, I still hope you choose me, this is my hope, but I do respect the fact this is not easy for you. That would have been a response I think that would have garnered a little bit more respect from Kwame and would have made it even easier for him to maybe open up in that moment and express more about what he's going through because otherwise he's gonna feel like whenever he's dealing with this particular stress, he's going to need to go to an outside person as not to upset Chelsea. Now, when they are having this random scene where they're shopping. Kwame was still reeling from some sort of argument or disagreement they had earlier that morning. And Chelsea was trying to dismiss that. This is the first time I started getting the impression. I'm like, Chelsea is actually very aware of how they're perceived on camera. She does not want them to be viewed in a certain way. So I could tell she was noticing that Kwame was like not in a great place. So she's like, <laughs> tell me how much you love me. Let's be positive. Like, let's be America's favorite couple or maybe it's like let's not air all of our dirty laundry either way I could tell she started being very focused on their image and how they would be perceived in that moment he's trying to express or show how frustrated he is and she's like you're so cute you know I was like this is really weird she is completely ignoring his words just trying to like minimize this as much as possible when Kwame starts talking about what it is this morning that bothered him right he asked her are you okay he said she goes do I look okay and then Chelsea goes, okay, so you want to throw me under the bus? That was all the proof I needed, right? Because what does that mean to be thrown under the bus? That means, oh, you're going to expose me, put me out there. That means she had an awareness of the audience, an awareness of the cameras. She was modifying, as of course many of us would do. She was modifying herself and trying her best to modify and control the image of the relationship in front of the camera. Do I look okay? They tried to talk about that as if she was being direct by saying that. But do I look okay is actually a passive aggressive comment. When you talk about communication, you have aggression, which you are trying to assert dominance or power in a situation by being aggressive. Typically that might be accompanied by anger, for example. Then you have direct or assertive communication. That's where you just say how you feel in that moment. That would have been Chelsea saying, I am not doing okay. Then you have passive aggressive. So in this case saying, do I look okay? You are being aggressive because you're trying to communicate that you're not okay without actually saying that outright. You're passing the responsibility over to your partner in this conversation to fill in the blanks for you. And then you have passive communication. And that would just be saying like, yeah, I'm doing fine. Because you want to minimize any potential conflict or tension. That choice to say, do I look okay? That was a passive aggressive comment. And also Ultimately, in the end, Chelsea went back to some of the good communication skills that we've seen between her and Kwame. When he says it's been stress, she says, yeah, it has, right? That is validating. You don't have to convince your partner that they're not stressed out. You don't have to convince your partner that you're also making a sacrifice. Sometimes all your partner needs to know is that you do recognize and respect the fact that they are dealing with their own internal struggles, even if it doesn't make sense to you, even if you're going through the exact same thing, knowing that that does not change the fact that they are also having a hard time in their own body and in their own mind. I don't have a lot to say about that boudoir shoot where Chelsea was saying this has always been her dream to have a shoot like this. I mean, I did make a note that in that moment, Chelsea seemed a little odd to me. She's definitely a unique person. I know people will be like, what did you think about the boudoir shoot that they did, the engagement shoot? I thought it was weird. What else can I say? For me, one of the most iconic Kwame moments, and there are quite a few, is the moment where he starts talking about how overpriced Seattle is. Seattle, you're overpriced. You know what I'm saying? Like, you are like, you are Lamar Odom with Michael Jordan prices. And clearly the Netflix producers picked up on this as well because they literally titled that episode something like, 
you're overpriced. And this again is where we see Kwame speaking in riddles, right? He's using abstract figurative language that really seems to suggest that he's using metaphors to talk about his experience with Chelsea. He says, Seattle, you're overpriced. I took that to mean, first of all, frustration he's feeling about having to uproot his life to move to Seattle to be with Chelsea. He talks a lot about the sacrifices and compromises that he has to make to be in a relationship with her. And I think he's starting at that point to question, is it worth it? Is the cost too high? Am I being charged too much to have this person in my life? And that is when I thought, okay, Kwame might not feel completely comfortable expressing his feelings directly about how he's feeling about Chelsea, but it seemed like he was really using some serious metaphors. He said, you're not that great, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying to get over that. Now, people might want my thoughts on his sister, Barbara. I never thought she was a paid actress. I was surprised to hear that in the reunion. I thought she was a sweetheart and having that support from her, and it was not just support like I'm here. It was like emphatic support. She was excited to be there to support him. She was happy and hopeful for him. And I think that is the last push he needed to make this choice to marry Chelsea. I think he was like, at least I have someone support here. and. His his sister knowing his mom and how she is, you know, and then her telling him that their dad is actually really excited about it. I think that was like one of the last things that Kwame needed to hear to say, okay, maybe everything will be okay. Maybe I can be with Chelsea and still have my family, but I'm not gonna lie. I was completely shocked that he said yes. And I was also surprised that there was absolutely no reflection of his culture in the wedding. I noticed that his bow tie, you saw a little bit of his culture but I think that Kwame in a way is so assimilated into the majority culture that maybe he didn't even think that that was an important factor and maybe it isn't maybe it wasn't important I'm just hoping that that's not an example of him losing even more of himself through this process or even through this relationship with Chelsea specifically now I will quickly talk about the reunion I already gave my thoughts about the Lachey's in the last video so I'm not going to be talking too much about that here but I did feel like Kwame and Chelsea were doing a bit of damage control in the reunion. He's like, I have to apologize to my wife, apologize to my wife's family. I was also gonna break up with Micah. He says, I'm here for my own free will. My sister Barbara is not a paid actress. So they were kind of using it as an opportunity to stop the rumor mill about things regarding them. I think ultimately, even though Kwame is good with his words, I don't think he was being completely honest in that process. But I think his priority at this point is not humiliating Chelsea and I respect that but I do think that he was being a bit dishonest. Maybe we just didn't see enough of Chelsea and Kwame's love story for me to be fully invested in that relationship. So that is my thoughts on Chelsea and Kwame and a little sprinkle of his relationship with Micah in there. Overall, they were definitely not one of my favorite couples, but I do genuinely hope they work out. If they're happy, I hope they can navigate the crazy media, myself included, people who are commenting on their relationship and things that happened to them over a year ago. I hope they're able to move past these things and continue to have a really strong bond. You know, I was happy to hear that Chelsea has met his mother and that things are going really well and she feels really welcomed by the family. I'm really hoping the best for them. I didn't see anything that was so concerning where I'm like, they don't need to be together. You know, I definitely don't think that Kwame's there against his will or anything like that. I don't think he's being abused. I think if there's any emotional abuse happening with Kwame, it's like self-inflicted. If he denies his emotions and represses his emotions and tries to gaslight himself and convince himself of things in order to just feel okay and protect his ego, that is the worst danger I think that can happen to Kwame. I Thank you guys so much for watching with me. If you're in the live premiere, I love, love, love chatting with you all. And if you had questions about things, you guys make sure you check the instant chat in these videos if you're watching it on demand because some questions you might have, I may answer them in the instant chat when people are asking me in there. Please subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other videos you want and like this video if you like this sort of content. You didn't have to watch this video all the way until the end, but I appreciate you so much for doing that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh